Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. I'm Callie. I'm Bean. I'm Brittany. So today we are going to talk about our book of the month um, for November, which was Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha again. And this is a story that follows a girl named Lei who has been chosen to be a paper girl. So in this world, there are three main casts. There is the moon cast, which is full demon type of people. They're still kind of humanoid, but have very animalistic qualities about them. So kind of like Minotaur-ish. Um, and then there's the steel cast, which is half demon, half human, which they have, they still have animalistic qualities, but much less pronounced. So they might have horns or like doe freckles. So like little things. And then we have the lowest cast, which is paper, which is full human. So Lei is of the paper cast and is chosen to be a paper girl, which is the paper girls. Eight are chosen every year between the ages of 16 and 19-ish. We'll get into that later. <laughs> They're chosen for the king to basically be his concubines. So each mm -hmm. year he gets eight new paper girls and does concubine things. Gets dark fast. Yeah, it so, does. This book kind of teeters around the line between, you know, the young adult and new adult. Um, there are a lot of adult themes. Um, so we're all kind of in the agreement that use caution. Um, so, mostly 17 and up. 17 and up. Um, 100%. Yeah. There's, and, there's some uh, real adult content in some, this book. Yeah, and some trigger warnings in there mm -hmm. for you too. For Yeah, definitely some content warnings. But, so the first half of this book is probably more culture and character development as well as world building. So we are in this world where demons are a normal thing. They suck. They're evil and mean and, you know, demony. Mm -hmm. And there is a typical YA plot line of there's a lower cast and there's a girl in that lower <laughs> cast who's going to change it all. <laughs> well, when you break it down like that. You <laughs> <little bit. laughs> Am I wrong? Nope. nope. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> But I did give this book four stars. I thought it was really, it was, even though it had that basic, very basic outline mm -hmm. of that, it had very unique qualities. I also gave it a four. Um, I felt kind of bored in the beginning, I'm not going to lie. Um, but I was really drawn into the uniqueness of the story, the way um, the different cultures that, you know, I've never really seen brought into a story before. So it was really nice to kind of step out of that kind of bubble that I've lived in and read in. Um, so that's why I really enjoyed and was really drawn into the story. And then everything hits the fan and you really get into it. So it's overall, I really enjoyed the story. So I also gave it a four. And I am the oddball out again. <laughs> and I gave this between a three and a 3.5 in all honesty. I, I enjoyed this book and I will be continuing with the sequel, which is out as well right now. But I was very kind of underwhelmed at the beginning. I felt like the first half was really drawn out and really she could have implemented the plot into the world building and it really wasn't. And then the second half was like fast forward speed on the plot and it's like, well, I wanted that second half to last. And basically it just kind of the pacing felt very strange, very almost like she was still figuring out her writing style in this. And it is a beautifully written book. It really is. I love the plot. I love the characters. Um, there were some pretty fun moments in there. <laughs> and um, I really did get into this story. It's just for me, it ended up being closer to like a 3.25. I will say her writing style was very immersive. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely felt very present in the story. There were times, I agree, where the pacing was a little weird. We'd fast forward a couple of months and I would, uh, unless it was specifically stated how long she had been there, I couldn't figure it. Because she wouldn't, when it was fast forward, it's like, it's been a couple of months. I'm like, well, what's a couple to you? Is that three? Is it two? Is it one? Like, I don't know. Yeah. So it wasn't very specific yeah. in that aspect. The mm -hmm. only time that I got a really sense of specific timeline was when she said it was getting colder and there was a chill in the air and we needed furs. And I was like, okay, so it's winter. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's all I had. <laughs> it went from colorful and fall like to cold and I'm like okay so are we talking January yeah what, like, where are we at where yeah. like do you have midwest weather do you have south southern weather I, we don't know I'm not really sure what's going so on so the pacing was a little off in this but yeah the so the main qualm that I think I had with this story was it was a lot of world building I am one of those people I like my world building kind of sparsely given as it goes through the story not just hello here's world building and 200 pages <laughs> it's yeah. some people like it mm -hmm. i'm not one of those people yeah i think it could have been spread out and i think that it, it should have been interspersed with the plot a little bit more and it would have made the book 
flow a bit better. A little bit, yeah. So I think that's sort of the general plot line um, that isn't giving away spoilers. So we're gonna go into spoiler town now and give away what happens um, in the end of the book and how the book ends. So if you don't want to hear that, you can stop watching now. And we'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Spoiler town! Yay! <laughs> Welcome! <laughs> One of the biggest things, it's not even that much of a spoiler, is why she's chosen to be a paper girl. So, Leigh has these, like, golden eyes. And one of the reasons she's chosen, well, the main reason she's chosen is because she is the paper girl with demon eyes and her beauty was told very far away and they went and found her. And that's literally all we know about her eyes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we have some thoughts. We have some thoughts as to if she's mm -hmm. like a descendant of a demon or if her mother was actually a steel cast or we don't really know. We have some ideas. Mm -hmm. We're, we're kind of teetering, at least I'm teetering, on, like, I kind of want it to just be a stroke of luck. But, like, I yeah. kind of want it to be important. But, like, I, I'm, I, I'd be happy kind of either way. I feel like it's going to end it. I don't know. I was thinking that it was going to be more important in this book itself. Joke's on you. Me yeah, too. right? <laughs> yeah. I thought it had something to do with her birth pendant, and yeah, that didn't much. happen. No. Yeah. So, I think the biggest thing about this book that a lot of people really enjoy is it is a female female love interest so which does not happen much i've in... never really read one so leia ends up actually falling in love with another paper girl which is never really happened before but just falling in love with anybody who's not the king is kind of a big no-no one of the girls is actually cast out because she is caught with a soldier and she is branded on mm -hmm. her face the word rotten yeah, so it's great. It's a little horrifying. Yeah. Just, just just a smidge. A little bit, a little bit there. So, yeah, mildly horrifying. But it, it showed us the power of like why they needed to keep their relationship so secret mm -hmm. and all mm -hmm. of that. That being said, and while this relationship was absolutely adorable, was. I loved was so the two cute. of them together. Yeah, Leia and Ren are really they just fit together so well did find it to be a bit insta-lovey. It was very insta-lovey. It was and our eyes met across the thing and we felt, and I <laughs> automatically knew I was in love with her. Like, it was a whole, yeah. it was a weird thing. But I did like how it ended up progressing through the story. Mm -hmm. Is It was insta-lovey, but then they built on that by getting to know each other, by doing, like, taking lessons with each other and learning with each other, Ren teaching her martial arts, and, like, it, it built to, like, some really nice moments and, between the two. Yeah, and even going, like, to the graveyard and seeing that she had put Lay's mom's name up on the tree, and it's it was it was really quite cool to see that kind of stuff develop. I also kind of like how she, the developed relationships of the other girls ended up. We only really talked to... A couple of them, uh, mm -hmm. besides Lei and Ren, we talked to Aoki, and we kind of talked to Blue. There's, like, twins, but they have, like, two lines. They're very minor characters, because we start out with technically nine girls, and then one doesn't even make it through her test. Um, she fails, because she used magic to make her face pretty. Yeah. Um, so she's cast sure. out, so it goes down to eight. Um, plot pretty much mm -hmm. why and then we kind of slowly meet everybody and kind of know what their dynamics are who's the kind of the wenchy ladies um versus who's like the down to earth and who you actually want to like so you have the villains and you have the good guys within the paper paper girls and you have the typical mean girl who is yeah. blue and she she's one of the from a few one of the few paper families who actually mm -hmm. have like some aristocratic power mm -hmm. or name so she thinks she's all cool and be like i my father lives at court too and she's the typical mean girl kind of thing and with daddy with issues lots of daddy Which issues also kind of saw coming oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, daddy. <laughs> the daddy issues you kind of saw coming from a mile away um, it did, it, it, it was kind of cool to see Lee connect with Blue a little bit and actually, like, talk to her 
rather than them just having this standoff relationship. Yeah, they, they actually she actually... Like, oh, you are a human too. Yeah, right? they, they had a nice little chat. We got to know a little bit about Blue's daddy issues, mm-hmm. um, and just general family issues. And I thought that was a nice touch and a good redemption for Blue until then, Blue just decided to screw everything up yep. and tell the king about Ren and Lee... And it just, just, she like, she, she was going up for me. She was and doing, then, yeah. then I would just don't care. Cause at this point with Aoki, who is the youngest one, the youngest paper girl in this group of girls, um, she ends up having this interesting development, um, where she falls in love with this demon king who he's a very cruel, ruthless yes. guy. He's mm-hmm. not a nice man. Mm-hmm. So she ends up falling in love with him and, um, she does, but she does keep Lei and Ren's secret. A secret. She keeps it from the king, which I thought spoke to her character. Mm-hmm, but yes. her falling in love with the king, I can see definitely becoming a problem. She's going to need a smack in the face moment later on. Yeah, and kind of one of my predictions for this was I could see her kind of almost accidentally becoming a bit of a spy for the king. Yeah. Because that's always... Uh, and uh view and you kind of see it in this book too is that courtesans like the whole a uh, whole thing with prostitutes is that you they they know all of these secrets about these high up people and it's shown in this book that the king talks to these girls they and do. tells yeah. them things he does and lots of them know secrets about court because because the king just likes he to does, talk he does that yep so that's always i think that's going to play a big bigger part in the next couple books. I think Lei is going to be naive enough to tell Aoki things, and Aoki's allegiance is going to still be to the king because she's mm-hmm. in love with him, and just bad things happen. Yeah, I think... That's yeah. kind of where I think that's going to go, is just... they're going to rescue Aoki, maybe. And then she's not going to want to be rescued. Yeah, she'll be a reluctant rescuee. It'll be a whole thing. Mm-hmm. I could see her being the next paper queen. Being a, the, the first, first paper, paper queen. queen. So, one of the things that I found really interesting was the idea of a demon queen. There is one, supposedly, if you haven't met her. She is literally there for breeding purposes. Has yet to produce anything, but I found it very interesting that they blamed it on the king and not her. Mm-hmm. That is n- historically Historic. yeah. never. It is always the girl's fault it when is. something like that happens, and this mm-hmm. They're blaming the king, and I think that's very different and very interesting. I and laughed out loud when they read it, when yeah, I read that I part. I'm just like, too. ha! Yeah. It <laughs> that was, sucks! Yeah. It's very... I think it creates a different dynamic mm-hmm. in court, opposed to blaming mm-hmm. the wife, they're blaming the king, and that causes a lot of stress for the king, which, big old bummer for him, but I mean... Sucks. You see the pity in our faces. Bummer. <laughs> it also kind of explains um, a little bit on why he is so cruel to the paper yeah. girls, um, where he has to feel like that is his only power is when he's with these with these girls. And it's like, it's gross, and I'm not defending this by any means. But it's more of the idea, like, this is where we're kind of getting that he's trying to use his makeup for the lack of being able to produce a child with the act of just overpowering these girls. Yes. Um, Like, the other really big reveal we get is who Ren actually is. So when we're introduced to Ren, she is the daughter of the most prominent and highest ranking paper family. She is that daughter. And basically... We just sort of think, when we're introduced, that she... Most of the paper cast hate this family because they think that they're traitors for working with the demons who have taken everything from them. Mm-hmm. Lo and behold, they're actually <laughs> running a rebellion! <laughs> Ta-da! Surprise! She is actually not their legitimate daughter. Mm-hmm. She is the, do- the last remaining survivor of the Zia, which are apparently a warrior race <laughs> clan thing that we learned about very I'm late in the book. Yeah. When she revealed, like, I'm a Zia, and I'm like, what's that? <laughs> cool. Explain. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, so I think that even though there was a lot of world building, some major things were missed. I think it would have been bigger if maybe Lei was brought up of the stories of the Zia and, mm. like, their wonderful warrior-ness and how they've tried to lead rebellions kind of a thing. So, I mean, there was just some things missing, I think, in the world building. And the 
Other thing that really bothered me that stuck with me the entire book is there's a math issue. <laughs> there's a couple it's, math it's, issues. Yeah, the inconsistencies are pretty bad. Yeah. And for me to catch a math problem, that's impressive. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. they, she continually says how it's been seven years since her mother has been kidnapped by the demons and mm-hmm. her village was raided and all of this. But then, like, a little bit later in the book, she's like, the last time I saw my mom, I was seven. I'm like, you're 17, not 14. Like, that's not how math works. <laughs> yep. So it's, yeah. <laughs> there's a couple inconsistencies that, like, I couldn't get out of my head. Like, that was one of the first things I wrote about this book was math problem. <laughs> Yeah, because I read it, and I thought I was just reading it incorrectly, and then Callie actually texted me about it, and I was like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just kind of fixed it in my head. I did. I fixed it in my head, but it's just something that kind of, like, it's a glaring issue that someone should have caught. Yeah. I know. I think in footnotes, I think she's went through eight rounds of editing. Yeah, that's a lot of editing. Looking at you, editing editing team. Yeah, that's an editing team problem. (laughs) (laughs) So there was a couple of inconsistencies, but I think overall the story was very dynamic. It it was a bit slow-paced, but I think that now that we have a solid world built, the sequels should pick up and we should get that big war plot I'm anticipating. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Big oh, war so. plot. Yes. Yeah. This is very, it for me, and I, I'm the only one who's read both these series, but for me it was very Selection meets Red Queen. So Red Queen had a big war plot, and I'm kind of anticipating a similar plot with the sequels to this one as well. I think, for me at least, one of the things that I was a bit frustrated with how it was resolved or how... We, what we learned was um, her birth pendant. So at birth, each person is given this birth pendant and there is a word inside of this pendant that will describe your future, will des- describe who you are. And this entire book, we're kind of like... Anticipating. What is what she, what's it going to say? What's hers going to be? Because at the end, she opens her birth pendant because mm-hmm. she turns 18, which is, that's cool, that's a cool Perfect. ending to a book. And then the word that she had just didn't resonate with no, me. No, I was so disappointed and I... There was all this build up yeah. and like just came crashing down. Because the word's flight. Yeah. And it's, it is symbolic. I mean, maybe it gets more symbolic and we're just jumping the gun on yeah. this judgment. Very possible. Very possible. But Still <laughs> underwhelmed. <laughs> Still underwhelmed. <laughs> Still had to read the paragraph twice because I was like, really? Was like, that's it? Because <laughs> I think for me, the entire time, I'm like, oh, it's going to be fire. Or it's going to be gold or Revolution. something. Revolution. Since I'm dramatic. The fire and all of that. And then when I Fire's got to it, I'm like, oh. Yeah. Because okay. fire is like throughout the entire exactly. book, fire is hinted at. Yes. Mm-hmm. Lots and lots and of fire. so I yep. actually thought I had misread it and it was fight. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Oh, nope. No. Nope. Nope. I didn't miss. Never mind. Never mind. So I do think we all plan on reading the like mm-hmm. rest of this mm-hmm. series. I'm interested to see where Leigh and um, Ren end up. Girls of Shadow and Storm is currently out, and the finale comes out in, I believe, November of 2020. So we don't have to, I guess we just have to wait a year to finish it. That's not too it's bad. It's not terrible. It's not like we read it last November. So I think we're all just kind of interested to see where it goes. The first, sometimes the first book just is a little underwhelming and they pick up in books two and three. And that's, I think, what we're kind of hoping with this this series. It is interesting. It is different. It's based um, on a different culture that not not a lot of us really read about Mm -hmm. um so that's a nice different perspective that we're all getting plus the gay relationship which is very interesting and intriguing so for the month of december um even though we are doing book miss our december book of the month will come out in about mid-january uh the book that we are reading this month is the seven husbands of evelyn hugo by taylor jenkins reed i've already read a taylor jenkins reed book and (laughs) loved it it made my top of the entire year so i'm excited to get to it and it's uh, another this is a historical fiction Mm mm-hmm And I think this is the first adult book we will be reading. First adult and first historical fiction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're very excited to get to this and we'll chat about it in about mid-January about what we all thought of it. So I believe that is all we have for today. Yeah, let us know if you want to join us in reading this and your own thoughts on Mm -hmm. any of our books. Any of them. So. All of them. <laughs> so feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Uh, we typically post every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, but since it is Bookmas, it is every day. Feel free to hit the bell icon if you want to be notified when we post videos, which 
as Kelly said, right now is every day. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and check out our Goodreads accounts. And we will see you guys in our next video. Bye! Bye.